Hey guys, well, I'm wrapping it up for the night and before I lock the door, I figured I'd give you a walk through of the shop. If you've been a fan of the channel for a little while, you're probably gonna see some changes. It just, it just never um, quite seems to stop evolving uh, as, as you get busier and busier. Um, but the point of this is, is just to, uh, you know, we're gonna talk a little bit about what you might wanna consider space-wise you don't need a space like this to start out with, um, but it'll give you hopefully some design ideas, some flow ideas, ideas about your workbench. Um, I know that was one thing that um, you know I I thought long and hard about was was how do I want my bench? Because one thing you'll find is everybody's going to tell you. Um, you want your bench X high and X and, and Y deep, and that that's what works for them. And I'm going to give you some advice to get your bench uh, height to what's going to work for you. So, um, without any further ado, let's go through the shop. All right. So right off the bat, um, I I think this is kind of important is I have, a, I have an area that's, uh, I call it my research and development area. Um, it's kind of partially a joke, but, but partially true. Um, it's just an area dedicated to the business. It's where I do all my paperwork, all my research, all my designs, um, billing, all, all of those things. I have, um, you know, I have my computer, I have my invoices, I have my parts books. Um, you come down here, I have my radio, I have a whiteboard where I can make notes, I have a couple uh, just pictures that are important to me, um, all of my, my, I have all of my textbooks down here um, from school, I have, um, I went on and, and picked up some more literature on honing up my um, machinist skills, I have some uh, very firearm specific uh, books up there for for the, what I seem to work on the most. I have uh, my my parts books, and then um, I have my some of my appraisal books. And this is this is by no means all of it. Um, I have quite a library, and, and we'll go through that when we really sit down and talk about tools. Um, the main part of my workbench is this area right there from the from the vise all the way down uh, to where the bookshelf is and that is uh, oh that's probably about 10 feet um, really though this area right here is just under uh, seven foot and that that's really um, you know if you're looking to really get going and and um, you're, you're kind of wondering what a good uh, uh, starter space is that's it right there you're looking at it um, that that and, and seriously that's where I do probably 65 70 percent of my work is in is in that one spot right there I have the tools that I use uh, every single day right there at my disposal um, you know there's not a lot of fancy tools I've got uh, several good screwdriver sets I have all my my punches um, picks, cleaning brushes, um, Dremel tool, um, and, and I'll speak about that when we really get into tools. I have acro glass, I, I use that a lot, the acro gel. All my needle files, polishing stones, uh, I have a spring loaded trigger gauge down here. It's kind of how I do a rough check. Um, that's my good set of calipers. Um, you know, just just the, this is where I do six. This is where I spend 65% of my time in this shop. So um, that's that's again, it's about seven foot, and um, that's what that's a good size to start out with. You can see it's very neat. Well, I think it's it's neat and organized. That's just the way I like to be. I think it. Um, you know, when people come in, I mean, I can be busy, busy, and have gun parts all over the place but it still looks very professional it doesn't look like a bomb went off it doesn't look like a cluttered mess 
Um, and, and I think just being neat and organized really, really helps you be safe and efficient. Um, so I think when you're starting out a good workbench and a, a dedicated spot for your business is, is really what you should focus on. Um, and just leave yourself enough room for a good bench vise. Um, that that's a very important piece of equipment um, So moving moving down the bench you can see I have a bench vise I have some shelving where I uh, keep all my cleaning supplies. I have some, a, a few refinishing supplies I don't I don't do a lot of that. I have some touch-up cold bluing supplies I have all my lubricating oils and greases and then um, I have that's actually that wood box is actually the first uh, cleaning kit that I ever had um, and it, it, it is a hoppies that's an old old one and then um, I have some uh, uh, vice blocks a little uh, basic set of uh, quarter inch sockets and then my good trigger gauge <clears throat> and then we come down to the far end of the bench which again is another eight feet and this is um, this is where I do most of my custom type work. So if I've got something in that's going to be here for a while, like I'm like I'm I'm actually in the process. i this this little AR is just about done. That was a custom build, and I've got two or three more right behind it. That's what you see on the shelves. So um, that's something to look forward to, guys. Also is. Uh, we're getting ready to go there, so stay tuned for that. But I just have, when I do custom work, I, do, I was doing enough of that and still having, you know, your your repair work and cleaning work come in where I just, I added on a whole separate spot to where I can take all my custom tools for whatever it is I'm working on. I can lay them out on the bench. I can have all my parts. Um, I have a notebook with the builds that I'm going to do and the parts required all written down. I have a plan and um, and that, that's where this, this takes place. So if I get to a point here where I can't, you know, I got to wait for something, I can, I can take a break. I can go down to the other, other end of the shop and still be productive. Um, so when you get to that point, that's something to consider. And again, that's eight feet. So I've got... Basically, I have got about uh, 24 foot in this little L of, of bench space. Um, this little spot right here uh, is unfinished. That's actually going to be a dedicated cleaning station here in the next week or two. That's where I'm going to put in my sink. And, um, and you know, my, I'll have a little water heater underneath the sink. And, uh, you know, I can have... That way I can do all my cleaning and all that stuff in the shop and I don't have to go outside to do it. It's, uh, it's been okay, but it's gotten real cold and, and it's been raining and it's, it's not okay anymore. So um, then on the, on the other side of the shop, um, I have my little sandblaster. Um, that, I, I gotta tell you, that has really served me well. I bought that on sale at Tractor Supply and it has paid for itself probably 10 times over it's that's just been a, a really good uh, piece of equipment i do a lot of my um a lot of my finish work on like custom glocks and things like that and there it's just you know you're not gonna sandblast a, a a very big barrel it's not a very big sandblaster but for all my all my glock work and and things like that um it's perfect if I'm if I'm working on uh, lower receivers or anything like that and I need to touch up goes in there perfect so that that's just been a fantastic piece of equipment I've had zero issues with it then we kind of step into what I call kind of the machine kind of like my machining area where I have my lathe I have a drill press with XY vice on it that uh, little wood cabinet has got all my uh, well, not all of them, but it's got all a lot of my machine tools. Um, it's got my, my uh, you know, I have an extra set of specs in there. I've got all my cutting oils in there, micrometers, dial calipers, um, dial gauges. 
uh, all my different jigs and, and cutting tools. Uh, that's what that wood box is, chucker block full of different cutting tools. I have my good set of dial calipers, extra belts for the lathe, um, my mill drill, drill bits. And then I have a good a good uh, hand file over there just in case I need to remove a burr or something like that. Um, a word on my lathe. I've got a lot of I've had a, a few questions on my lathe. My lathe is a nine by twenty. It's not a mini. It's not a mini lathe, but it's not a big lathe either. Um, I've I've done an awful lot of custom barrel work in that, and I've had to get creative with how I do it. Uh, but boy, it it it's done it um if if i was really gonna do that and make my living just just working on barrels um or i got more busy in that in that work then i would uh, and i which i probably will upgrade um to a to a regular gunsmith lathe um, but that little nine by 20 is has really served me very very well I was real patient and and I think I bought I bought that used in really good shape for like 500 bucks and and that that paid for itself in the very first very first time I turned it on um, same same with my mill drill this is not a milling machine this is a it's a very fancy drill press um, but I, I paid uh, like 375 400 for that used and that's that's how I picked it up, and it has done everything that I have needed it to do very accurately. Uh, again, so just, just be patient with those things. Um, and then we move on down into like my little polishing area. I'm going to tell you uh, right now on tools that you got to have. Um, that little one inch belt sander has just been used to death brought back to life and used to death six more times um, you're going to use that more than you'll ever use a bench grinder so you know that that to me is kind of a must-have that and my my polishing wheel this is not a grinder with with um with with buffing wheels on it that's a, it's a buffer designed to polish um and then then i have my little bench grinder which that that I've turned on twice since I've since it's been in the shop uh, once it was to make sure it still worked and um, and then uh, I actually had a, a, a I had some work to do that was not gun related and this is where it was so that's actually getting it's gonna get moved back out to, to what I call the dirty room or, or the metal shop and I have a little parts bin behind that I keep a lot of um, I have Glock parts in there. I have uh, Remington. I work on a lot of Remington 700s, so I have a lot of Remington 700 parts in there. Um, and and um, you know just whatever you whatever you're working on, you'll in your area that just seems to come in all the time. You'll you'll sure want to keep parts for that on hand. Um, Glocks are very popular, so I have different spring kits. I have stock spring kits, and I have. Um, I get I get every, more than more than I should really. I get a lot of calls on the little cups from the uh, the striker assembly. They they go to take that apart and lose the cups, so I keep those on hand. Um, and for decoration, I've got all my certificates uh, hung up. And then um, my my uh, my gun safe isn't a safe per se. Um, ATF. The, what ATF says is, is as long as it can be secured and it, it, as long as your firearms can be secured and the way you secure them is secured, that's what you can use. Well, I, I like vintage and, um, and I like history and that gun cabinet, uh, solid wood and it was made by an old uh, cabinet maker about two towns over uh, for his son. And then he passed it on to his son, and his son, um, he he got a safe, and um, I picked that up, and and it it locks top and bottom, so I have all my long guns in the top, the glass part, which that's shatterproof, uh, locks top and bottom, and then down in the bottom wood cabinet, that's where all the all the revolvers and and pistols go, and and it 
and what I did is it's bolted to the floor to uh, so there's big bolts that go through the floor and then it goes into a piece of quarter inch plate that's actually welded and bolted to the building so it's it's not going anywhere um, and then uh, that's that's the shop guys so um, what I'm gonna do is we're gonna take a little bit of time and I'm gonna talk about uh, workbench like just you know how to give you some thoughts on uh, how to set up you know how to design your workbench or at least what works for me and, and, and it, it'll probably work for you as well so I'll just take a minute and get set up for that okay guys so when it comes to actually building and designing your workbench this is this is what I'm gonna this is my opinion on that I've, I've, I've seen a lot and I've heard a lot and I've read a lot about you want your bench this high and this wide and it's like it's just etching stone and what I'm gonna tell you um, what what works for me and I think what what will work for most people is take this approach um, as far as your bench height there's times I like to sit and there's times I like to stand and I need to be comfortable doing both so if I build my bench at a standard 32 inches I'm six foot two I'm gonna be like hunched over the whole day and that's really going to put a lot of a lot of pressure on my lower back and it's, it's not going to be very comfortable so what i'm going to tell you is on bench height and, I, and i've got this uh, little glock laid out here so you can see what i'm talking about is this is it this is if i'm standing here this is how i would be working on it just like this you can see i'm not hunched over it's very comfortable i can i can be here uh all day and, and be comfortable uh, just just as well as as i can sit down and and work here all day so it's what i'm going to say on your bench is you see when i put my hands on my bench if you look at the angle of my elbow that's how high you want your bench whatever that number for you is that's how high you want your bench in my case the bench of this this my work bench is 43 inches tall the depth of my bench that's another thing that people will say is they, they'll tell you you don't want them very wide you don't want them you know you want them narrow or you want them uh, again I I don't want a narrow bench for my workbench because this part of the bench collects a lot of stuff and so I want to I want enough separation to where that stuff back there has its area and whatever I'm working on has its real estate. I don't want any interference. But in the same sense, I want to be able to reach everything pretty easily without needing a step stool. So for me, that was 30, from the pegboard to the front of the bench is 36 inches. So um, it's 43 inches. My workbench is 43 inches tall, 36 inches deep. The other thing you'll notice is I don't use gun mats. I use carpet. Car this is cheap and it's very easy to clean uh, if it gets real dirty or whatever you know it gets i take it out i hose it off i shake all the garbage out of it and it's ready to go i let it sit overnight and dry and it's ready to go the next day um that that's all i'm, I'm not going to get into tools in this episode because we'll be here for hours um, but i am going to do a whole uh video on on uh, the tools that you should have to just get going um, and, and be productive. And it, it's not as, as many as you think. Um, I'm gonna go over there and we're gonna talk about the actual uh, tooling benches because... Okay, so on my tooling benches, uh, these are nowhere near as tall and they're nowhere near as deep. Uh, the reason being is uh, these are, these are 30, uh, 36 inches tall because that's what's comfortable for me to work on parts here. The reason it's not as tall as my workbench per se is I don't want this in my face. So that if something gets away from me, I don't want it immediately getting uh, shot, into my, shot into my eyes or wherever. Um, so for me, it's just a comfortable working height where I can still see everything. Again, not be hunched over. I can stand comfortably. 
polish or, or sand whatever I need to and it's just it's very comfortable um, so for me that distance was 36 inches high as far as depth um, I didn't make a very deep bench over here because in this case I have a lot of moving machines I don't want a lot of clutter back here I want to be able to keep this and, and clean this very easily if I do have pegboard so if I need to have things over here they can get hung up on the pegboard or put up here on the shelf um, and then over here this this bench is the same height it, it's just a little bit deeper to accommodate uh, the mill drill um, otherwise because you'll see it wouldn't fit uh, but still there, there's not room for a lot of clutter behind this so it's just it's over here it's just about being able to just I uh, come in and blow it out with air and and then I can sweep the shop and I'm, I'm done so it's just um, you know that that's why it's a different height and different depth well guys that concludes the tour of my shop I hope that uh, helps you out and that maybe it'll give you some design ideas and some flow ideas like I said, I'll get into uh, the tools that you're going to need um, when you're starting out uh, soon. Um, I'm actually getting ready to head out to the SHOT Show. Uh, today's Saturday, so I'm leaving uh, very, very early Tuesday. And I'll be back um, very early uh, Friday morning. I think I get back at uh, 1 in the morning. And then after that, we've got to hit the ground running. I want to I wanna go over um, tools you're going to need to start out with. And also some of the projects we got coming up um, on the AR, we're going to be looking at, um, you know, we're going to be looking at milling, uh, milling some lowers, and how to how to really build a, a, some really fine uh, AR ARs of different calibers. So that that'll be fun. Stay tuned for that. Um, outside of that, if you have any questions or comments, please please send them. Um, and again, please like and subscribe if you enjoy the page. We're get, we, you know, we're, I'm trying to do uh, hopefully some pretty informative and uh, fun things that can that can help help you out. Uh, whether you want to be a professional gunsmith or, or just uh, a hobby gunsmith, or just want to be a little bit more proficient with whatever it is you own. So hopefully, I'm doing that. Um, anyways, guys, that's it. Have a great rest of the weekend, and we'll see you soon.